saunas and ice baths all the rage right now <laughs> yes i love that you're coming at this from a scientific perspective what do we what do we need to understand here about exposing ourselves to hot and cold what's happening at a cellular level and how do you want people to think about this and and consider it in their own life yeah so i again view this from the perspective of hormesis in heat and cold are thermal stressors they throw our bodies out of balance so our body has a natural temperature that's roughly 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. When we are exposed to cold, our core body temperature drops. When we're exposed to heat, our core body temperature goes up and that kicks in all these feedback mechanisms that our body uses to reestablish that homeostatic temperature where our enzymes function optimally. In that process, of our body kicking in these um, responses, we activate these cellular stress responses that start the repair processes, the um, uh, clearance of damage from our bodies. They reduce inflammation, reduce oxidative um, damage. So these protocols for heat and cold are helping us at a cellular level um, achieve a lot of these repair and regenerative functions. Um, so I, I think that they're promising from that standpoint. Um, there are also physiologic benefits to each of them. Uh, for example, with cold exposure, um, our body responds to cold by turning on this internal space heater we have called brown fat. And brown fat is very metabolically active. And what's really kind of fascinating is whereas white fat stores energy, brown fat is trying to break it down. It's utilizing fats and glucose to generate heat. Um, so there's a lot of interest in can we use brown fat to improve our metabolic health, kind of breaking down our stores just as fasting or exercise would do. Um, and um, I think that's hugely interesting. Most of the increase in our metabolism that happens through cold exposure happens from muscle shivering. We simply just have so much more muscle mass than we do brown fat that a lot of the improvements to our metabolism are, are coming from the muscle shivering as opposed to non-shivering thermogenesis. Um, but nonetheless, I think um, this is a really exciting area um, and I think we're going to see a lot more studies right now. There's a lot of association studies that people who have more brown fat tend to have lower BMIs. There are um, association studies as well with different lipid parameters. But I think we're going to um, use uh, potentially see more as brown fat as something that can be used in different capacities to help our metabolic health. Heat, I think we have stronger data on than we do with cold. Um, part of that is because with heat, um, the protocols are much more consistent. Um, they're generally sauna protocols um, with longitudinal data. With cold, they're usually smaller studies, many different protocols. It's very hard to make strong generalizations. With heat, um, it mimics exercise um, when our bodies are trying to dissipate heat. Sweating is our internal air conditioner and our body's trying to shunt blood to our skin where we can evaporate the heat. In that process, our heart rate goes up and we can mimic really moderate to high intensity exercise. So our heart rate can be anywhere from 120 to 150 beats per minute from sauna exposure. And that process creates a shearing force on our blood vessels and that shear stress from the blood being shunted towards the periphery um, improves our endothelial function. The endothelium is that lining between the blood and our blood vessel wall. And we have like 60,000 miles of endothelium. And as those um, endothelial cells experience the shear force, they release more nitric oxide Nitric oxide is a vasodilator. It reduces clotting ability in our um, blood vessels. It reduces 
oxidative stress, it reduces inflammation. So it essentially is making our endothelial lining healthier, which reduces our risk of cardiovascular disease. Um, so there, there's, I think, a lot of benefit to using thermal stress. Um, I would say it's an adjunct, again, to diet and exercise, not a substitute, but I think a very overlooked way that we can improve our health. So perhaps first getting the phytochemicals into the diet, thinking about a, a 10 hour eating window, getting the high intensity exercise. And then from there, when those are in play and consistent with those, thinking about this thermal exposure, I can see people now, Sharon, thinking, okay, I'm going to fast, I'm going to wake up, I'm going to do my cardio, I'm going to go straight from my cardio into a sauna and maybe before I hop in the sauna, I'll grab a broccoli sprout juice and stack stack all of these things together. You know, again, I think there's merit to each of these, but um, you kind of have to experiment a little bit. Certainly if you... Um, do a nice cardio workout, then go into the sauna, you can extend some of the benefits from the cardio workout. Um, and, you know, certainly for people who can't exercise, um, sauna has a lot of benefit. Um, I think with th the way to kind of look at how do you incorporate these good stressors is start with one, um, kind of get to where you feel that you your health is optimized, like kind of track how you feel with each one. You want to push past your comfort zone, but not to the point of overwhelm, take time for recovery, then introduce the next and kind of in that fashion, stack the habits. Um, and I think that collectively you can create a very healthy lifestyle by doing it that way. Is sauna something that you use personally? And if so, what does that look like in terms of number of times a week or how long do you stay in there? Yeah. Um, so my access to sauna is my limitation. So I, I wish I had one in my home, but I don't. So my limitation is I, I have to go to a gym to access sauna. Um, what is more practical for my day to day is hot baths. Um, and, and I would say that for anyone listening who doesn't have fancy equipment, <laughs> this is also a way to practically incorporate these good stresses in your life. So a hot bath between 102 to 104 degrees um, has a lot of the benefits we're talking about. It can activate heat shock proteins, which is one of the mechanisms by which we get a lot of the benefits from heat. And um, I do that. Um, a couple times a week, um, as time allows, um, close to bedtime so that I can naturally, um, allow my body to cool off and that cooling off process helps with getting better sleep at night. And just to be clear, that's 102 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Absolutely. For, yes. For my Australian <laughs> listeners out there, yes. uh, we don't want you to get into 102 to 104 degrees Celsius. <laughs> no. <laughs> I am absolutely excited to share an exclusive offer with the Proof community. This is a limited time offer just for my audience and no doctor referral is needed. Function Health is a comprehensive at-home blood testing service that gives you access to over 100 biomarkers, covering everything from heart, liver, kidney, and metabolic health to hormone levels, inflammation, and nutrient status. That, my friends, is five times more testing than the average physical. I chose Function for my own blood work and to be a sponsor of this show because they are the best in the world when it comes to helping you understand and own your health. It's true, the depth and quality of their testing is unrivaled. And as regular listeners of this show will know, you cannot optimize what you don't measure. Don't guess, test. Use Function to know exactly where your health is today, and then intervene with evidence-based medicine and lifestyle changes to feel your best and reduce your risk of chronic disease. 
With Function, you get access to very important markers like LP little a, a genetically driven cardiovascular risk factor, APOB, the most predictive marker of atherosclerosis, and LH and FSH, reproductive hormones typically missing from standard lab panels. It's not uncommon for these biomarkers and others to be elevated. For example, over 50% of Function members have an APOB level, and over 20% have an LPA little level that is above the optimal range. You can even add on harder to access tests like cystatin C, a very sensitive marker of kidney function, as well as selenium and iodine nutrients that are essential for thyroid and overall health, yet rarely tested. So what are you waiting for? Run over to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill today and be one of 1000 listeners to score a $100 credit. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.